good. Oh, you can totally see that I'm wearing shorts. Good. Hello everyone. Today we are here to answer a question that I often get and also that I think doesn't get asked enough and that is when do I need to start an email list? So if you are here, you are probably a Teachers Pay Teacher seller. If you're not, that's fine too. And I don't know about you, but I went to the TBT conference in 2020, July, 2020. And there were two things, well, three things really that I noticed were talked about a lot. And that was previews, blogs, and email lists. Now email lists kind of are a hot topic. I feel like they were really big and then people like kind of stopped talking about them and now people are talking about them again. And so I'm starting to get that question again. When should I start my email list? When should I do that? What is the best time for my business? So today we're going to answer that question, but first make sure that you hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't done so, so far. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up because that actually does like make a huge difference. It tells YouTube, hey, I like this video. And then YouTube finds other people like you to then come find this video. Now that we've had our little YouTube lesson for today, we're gonna get right out into it. So when should I start my email list? There's a Chinese proverb that says, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. But the second best time to plant it is now. And I'm gonna say that is the same for your email list. The best time to start your email list was whenever you started your business. But if you didn't start your email list when you started your business, the second best time to start it is right now. Like watch this video and then go do it. A lot of people don't start when they first start because it seems intimidating. Like sending emails to people seems just a little bit stressful, but it's not. And today in the next couple of videos, we're going to talk about why it's not stressful, how to do it in an easy way. So make sure that you stick around. So I personally started my email list when I started my blog. Now, if you don't know my story, Hey, I'm Becca. I am the teacher over at beccasmusicgroup.com and I started my blog in 2017. I started purely from a blogger's perspective and had no intention of starting a Teachers Pay Teachers store, <laughs> but here we are. And when I was looking at stuff for the blogging space, of course I did lots of research and I looked all over Pinterest and read all these blog posts about starting a blog. And everybody was like, start your email, start your email, start your email. And I am a rule follower. So I, you know, Enneagram number one, if you're a number one on the Enneagram, hit me up, let me know. I was like, okay, I guess I'm gonna start my email list. I didn't know what to send them. I didn't know what to do, but I started it anyway. And this is really important because when I started my blog, I had a few months where I was collecting emails from people even before I knew how to get people on my email list, but a couple of people did actually join. So some people joined my email list, not a ton, but a few. So by the time I got to the point where I felt like I could send them an email, then I already had about 50 people. And let me tell you, it is a lot less awkward to send an email to 50 people than it is to send to zero people. Now, do I suggest that you start an email list and ignore them for months? No, because once I did start sending emails, some of the people had like forgotten who I was because they hadn't read my stuff in months. So probably don't do that. However, I would say do it as soon as possible. Email is still king. And since I have started actually investing my email list, spending time thinking about it, making efforts into it, sending them things, I have seen so much growth. I have more email subscribers than I have Instagram followers on both of my lists. Yeah. Yeah. Let that sink in for a minute. My email lists are bigger than my social media following, which is kind of crazy because I feel like it's less of an opt-in to join someone's social media than it is to join someone's email list. But I have more people on my email list than I do on my social media. So that's where I am. Like I, and my email list does well and they convert well and they talk to me and it's really good. So I am so glad that I started as soon as possible because even though I didn't know what to do at first, once I got to a point where I really felt like I could put some time into it, it has paid off so much. Now, if you don't believe me that email indeed is king and maybe you're thinking, well, maybe Becca's just bad at Instagram and much better at email, which is mm, probably true. Um, we're going to go through a couple of reasons why email really is super important even now. So number one, email is direct. 
email goes to people's inboxes as opposed to when I post on Facebook, it just goes into Facebook land and may or may not end up on somebody's feed. Also, they may or may not actually check Facebook. I hardly ever check Facebook. Personally, I like never checked it until I started Facebook groups and then I was like, well, crud, I should probably check it now. By the way, if you're not, go join the Facebook group, link down below, because I do check it now. <laughs> and we hang out and we talk and we have good conversations. Um, but that takes us to number two, is that people actually check their emails. Yeah, especially for teachers, because I find a lot of people will sign up to my email list with their district email. And I don't know about you, but my district is like, you better check your email three times a day, every day. And I do, I'm okay, okay, rule follower, first of all. Secondly, cause I don't like not knowing things. And email is usually where they send me things that I need to know. So people actually check their emails. And I see this a lot because I typically send emails on Sundays and I get a lot of people who see it Monday morning because they got to work. They checked their email, they saw my email, they read it, they might've gone and read my blog post or clicked on the link that I had. So people check their emails. Number three is email doesn't have algorithms. Now, yes, email has junk folders, they have spam folders, and now Gmail does that really annoying thing where it kind of sorts like between promotions and social and stuff. I, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. But it still isn't an algorithm as opposed to on Instagram, there is an algorithm, which is this magical thing that says people may or may not actually see your content. Yeah. And on Facebook, I would venture to say it's even worse on Facebook than it is on Instagram from what I have seen. Even on YouTube, there is a YouTube algorithm that says that some of you may not even get to see my videos, which is why it's so important to check your subscriptions and to hit the little bell notification so you actually get like a little thing when I post a new video so you don't lose anything because YouTube and Instagram and all those places have algorithms, which means their goal is not to show you to everybody, which means that you might not get shown to everybody. A few years ago, I don't know if you have been on Instagram as long as I have, but when Instagram used to be based on the time that you post. So it used to be, oh, you posted at 12 and this person posted at one. It's a newer thing, so it's up higher, but it was in chronological order. So all you had to do was post at the right time and people would see it. Now there's like this whole algorithm and I have zero ideas how it works. However, I can tell you that not everyone actually sees your post, even if they're on Instagram. And then also, they might not be on Instagram. They might not be on Facebook. They might not, you know, they might not be there at the time that you post something as opposed to email where it'll sit in their inbox until they open it or they delete it. They have to do something with that for it to go away. As opposed to on Instagram, they might just not ever see it. If you send someone an email, it's there. They have to actually make some sort of contact with it for it to go away. And number four is the email is consistent. Social media comes and goes, y'all. Do you remember MySpace? Just saying, just saying. Now, I mean, I was in like middle school when MySpace was a thing, but I totally had one. And I shouldn't have said that because now you're gonna go try to go find it. Don't go find it. I don't even know what name it's under. Anyway, so MySpace is gone, TikTok is in, Snapchat's on its way out, even though I have a bunch of people in my life who are like all about snapping. I'm like, y'all, Snapchat is dead. Just go, go, it needs to go away. Um, it's just, you know, Instagram just took away the point. Remember MySpace and remember the email is consistent. And even if tomorrow TikTok really does get banned or tomorrow Instagram goes away, or there's some new cool thing, then you still have email addresses that probably still work that you can use. And you can always use that traffic to drive them over to whatever the new social media is. But the point being, email's not going anywhere. Cause you have to have an email to sign up for all the other things. So <laughs> you have to have email. All right, so now that we've gone over a couple reasons why email is the bomb, Let's talk about what you actually need to do. So if you are like, okay, Becca, you've convinced me, I will go start my email list, which is what it should be, because that's what you should do. 
I have a MailChimp account. I will link the link down below. You can also start on ConvertKit. A lot of people like ConvertKit. I've never used it, so I can't tell you if I like it or not, but I've never really had a problem with MailChimp. And one thing I like about MailChimp is that first of all, they're free until you hit about a thousand subscribers. Secondly, they have really good help. So if you just need to know something, I literally just type into Google like MailChimp, how do I X, Y, Z? And it'll come up and MailChimp has like tutorials for everything and is really helpful as far as that goes. So sign up for a free MailChimp account. Then what you need to actually get people onto your list is a landing page. On MailChimp, all you have to do is click create and then landing page. And then it will take you to where you can do that. It has all these different templates and you just, pick whatever template you want. On your landing page, you need a place for people to put their email address and probably their name as well. You can add, you know, like birthday and all the different things. I usually just go name and email address because I don't really need to know everything else. So you can have them do that. And that will give you the link that you actually give to people for them to sign up. So you don't so for them to sign up for your email account, you actually have to like give them the link or put it in your Instagram bio or put it in your YouTube description and they click on it to go and join your email list. Now, like we said, you might have started this really early like you know i did i told you that i started really early and i am so glad that i did one way i'd want you to not be like me is that when i started i didn't actually send anything at first because i was trying to tackle blogging and i was just like this is a lot and i didn't even have internet at my house and it was just like this whole big thing so i kind of waited a few months before i started sending emails i would suggest that you start sending emails as soon as people are there now that doesn't mean you have to send like an email a day it just means send one maybe once a month i think once a month is probably the least amount that you would want to send one to people just to kind of check up on people and you know let them know what's going on and just keep yourself on the forefront of their mind then later on if you want to send more i would definitely say send more i would suggest at least one a week if you feel you're up to that but again start it once a month you can go to twice a month and then eventually go to once a week and we're going to talk more about all of that kind of stuff in a later video and if you're worried about what to send them first of all yes we will have a video all about ideas of what to send to your email list but just start on something simple so pick something you've done recently and make it based on that. I teach music, so for example, I might have a new blog post that's all about a certain song. So in my email, I'm going to talk about maybe like my three favorite songs for teaching quarter note, okay? Or I might pick to go more in depth with that song that I already taught. Or here's three options for what you could do with that song that I told you about in my blog post. Another option would be going off of a resource. Now, yes, you can just send people the link to the resource and some info and say, hey, buy my resource. We'll talk about that more in another video, like exactly how to do that without being super, super pushy. But I wouldn't suggest that being all that you send. Really try to make your email list excited to open your emails if they're all sales emails they won't open them like me with michael's emails i never opened michael's emails because they're trying to tell me every day that there's a sale and i'm like you just had a sale yesterday um i just delete um so don't do that do however try to incorporate your resources in ways that are adding value so if you have a resource that's all about math facts I, I have no idea then you could talk about different ways to track if students are learning their math facts you know with those like multiplication charts or different games that you play in math centers or something like that where you can still talk about your resource but you're also adding value make sure that you're adding value again sometimes it's totally fine to just throw out a here by this but try to add value as much as you can and, and minimize the direct sales emails. And if you need more information about like what to send people on Friday, if you're watching this right when it comes out, we're going to have a video that's all about the do's and don'ts of email marketing. So we'll get a little more in depth as far as sales emails, adding value, how often you should send emails and all of those different things. I like to try to keep these videos fairly short so that they're 
digestible. You can take what you learned today and go act on it. So right now, if you don't have an email list, go sign up for MailChimp, go create a landing page and post it to all your social media and let them know they can now follow you on your email list and start sending emails. If you have an email list already, then just see if there's any areas that you can improve. And we're gonna talk about all those things in the future. So again, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little bell so that you get notifications. You can also sign up for my email list. I will put the link down below. I have an email list that is all about teachers pay teachers stuff. And whenever I have a new video that goes out, you're always the first people to know. They also get other helpful things and free things. I have some freebies I will link down below. So I hope to see you over there and I will see you next time. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. The cars are so loud. I don't know why I'm so loud in this room. Could we not have giant tree trucks driving down the road?